Tom was like, you got to get Sam on. Sam is here. He wrote a book about theater. And I said, oh, he has enough information to write a book. He's definitely got enough information in his brain to talk about theater. So why don't we start with that? Why don't we start with the book? Tell us about it. Well, actually, I started that book in 1987. Oh. I did a little slim for our 35th year. Mm. I did a little slim book. It was black and white. had a lot of pictures, but there wasn't much history in it. So the next time was 2009. I did a DVD with, with slides and the title of, of what, but there wasn't much information. So, you know, you went through, it was rather quick. So I decided, well, I'm going to do a DVD plus a book. So I did that. The book had all the information. You had the DVD. However, you look at the picture, you had to look at the DVD, you know, at the book. It didn't work. <laughs> so then that was 2012. And then I started working on the book. It took me three years to do it. And the book is specifically about Waterville Play Shop or all of the No, no, it's specifically about Waterville Play Shop. Ah. Yeah, it's from its foundation up to 2018, which is where I cut it off because I had to cut it off somewhere. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a book to take to the publisher eventually. You right. can't just keep going because Waterville Play Shop isn't going to stop for you. It's going to keep going, obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> show after show. All over to 2018, though, that's recent. That's very recent. One of my kids in that book, actually. I should probably look. They're sold out. Oh. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> now, the third guy that does podcasts with this is a guy named Ron. And Ron's picture's in there. In, uh, Into the Woods. Into the Woods. Very good. And um, he's also, he was in Fiddler on the Roof. His name's in Fiddler on the Roof. He played a much bigger character in that. Yeah, he has a huge role. He was in- Laser Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets excluded. But he got no picture. But that's okay. But his, his, his name's in there, and he, we, he, he was all excited about He doesn't about that. need more attention. He's fine. We, I mean, he gets plenty of glory. <laughs> so he doesn't need one more one more photo of Ron not existing in yeah. the world is fine. I, so. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. In 1952, when this started. Here was the interesting thing. that started in 52. Uh, the driving force was a woman by the name of Marion Thornberry. And... Uh, She was a very good actress, and she appeared in local theaters, especially the rep. And uh, she felt that there was enough talent in Waterville to organize a a theater group. So 36 of them got together, and they decided, yeah, we're going to have a theater group. And they said, what what are we going to call ourselves? And John Saunders, you know John Saunders, who was on TV, Well, he said, why don't we call ourselves Waterville Play Shop, which they did. And these people were very ambitious. They weren't going to start out with one show and see how it went. They made up three, three shows that they were going to do. And everybody that was there had to throw in 75 cents to help finance the first show. Oh, (laughs) well, I mean, that's what year again? So who knows? I mean, this was August 1952. Okay, well, I I want change for my buck. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you could 75 cents, it must have went very far, obviously. I mean, you, yeah. you got three shows, so each show was only 75 cents? Yeah. <laughs> so and what was the ticket prices, I wonder, and something like that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, ticket prices were 75 cents. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and of course, in Waterville, as you all know, there aren't very many places to do theater, except the old Waterville School on River Road, which they've torn down. That's where they did their first two shows. And it's a very small stage with no room in the, in the wings to store anything. So all their shows were one set shows. And they didn't have a spotlight or lights overhead, so they, they built footlights and put them on the stage. And, that's, and there no seats, so they had to rent chairs, bring them in, set them up, take them down, put them up again for the next show. But they did it gladly, and by the third show, Anthony Wayne High School was built, and then they did their shows out there for the next 56 years. Oh, so they only the first actual two shows. Now, we're not talking season. We're talking the first two shows were in one location, and then the high school was built. So they got to reap the rewards of a high school being built. Right. Very cool. But where was the first practice? Oh, the first practice... Was was in the uh, fire hall, downtown fire hall. 
right. which which now is the home of the Waterville Play Shop. Oh, yeah. I, I that's look so at this full circle going on. I, see, I was wondering why you asked him that. You're like really fishing for it. Like, whoa, what? what? I read oh. his book. And, <laughs> and, and, and yeah. it depended. If it was a small cast, they usually had it in their home. You know, there was because the stage down there wasn't very big. It's when they got out to Anthony Wayne that. They the rehearsals in their home? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. So somebody just had to just move, some, yeah. push some chairs and couches out of the way, kind of like we just did here. <laughs> we just pushed some chairs out of the way and, and, and started doing our thing. So, so when did one, you get involved? One of their rehearsals was up at the funeral home here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Which, is that Pinert? No, that's, no uh, uh, that's, that's in White, Water, White House. Yeah. One in water. It's though. exciting right. though, Tom, because if, if they had to push the couches out of the way, and we have yeah. to do those kind of things. Maybe someday, you know, you and I will have our own what? funeral home. Yeah, yeah, we'll have our own building, <laughs> yeah. as I was going to say. But sure, funeral home. So, we know we'll have we'll be a part of that someday. Right. <laughs> when did you get involved with Waterville Play Shop? Well, it was inevitable. Ah. I moved to uh, Maple Lane in 1969. On one side of me was Herb Wyatt and Jam Wyatt long-time Waterville Play Shop members. Across the street was another couple, Aub and Marion. They were long, Asher, they were long-time Play Shop members. Two doors down were Ken and Pat Dickey, also members. To the right of me were the Barrowells, they were members. And so at that time, they were going door to door and soliciting memberships. And they came and I said, Oh, yeah, I'll join. And so the first show I saw was the fall of 1970. Did, did you even like musicals? Or did they absolutely recruit you that in that regard, too? No, just, they just asked me to join the play shop. Oh, yeah, but you got to like acting in shows and stuff, though, don't well, you? Or, I didn't like acting because I wasn't good at it. Oh. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the music end of it. Okay. And so the first show I saw had the longest title, Oh, Dad, Poor Dad, Mama's Got You in the Closet, and I'm Feeling So Sad. <laughs> At least it <laughs> rhymed, so it helps you remember that, it. That was it, so... I'm guessing a comedy? I, 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 got, I got involved because I said to Herb Wyant one day, you know, if you need help with the music, let me know. Well, he did. <laughs> so I worked with Herb, and then I worked with, with uh, Herb for two shows, and... Uh, then we weren't doing very well. Play shop wasn't doing very well. So along came Marty Bieber. Okay. Her name is Martha, but they all called her Marty. Mm. And she directed... Way more approachable. They're known as Marty than Martha, I think. It's just way more approachable. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, she directed three shows, Guys and Dolls, Kiss Me Kate, and South Pacific. Oh, big ones. And each one of, at that time, it was a 70, 73, 74, 75, and each of those shows had more and more people come to see them. And that was one of the big reasons. The second big reason was we found an accompanist. Uh. Joanna Umloff. Oh, Joanna. We know, I know Joanna. You know Joanna? Yeah, she goes to our church. Yeah, she goes oh. to our church. Well... <laughs> We were going to have an orchestra for Guys and Dolls, and we needed a rehearsal pianist. So one of the members on the board, Bill Umlaw, said, well, let me take this down and show my wife and see what she thinks. Well, the vocal score is a reduction of the orchestra, you know, big chords in both hands. And she looked at it, and she said, yeah, I'll do it. And I was amazed. Well, as we went through, the orchestra never materialized, and Joanna played for the show. There was Joanna and a drummer, and she went on to play for another 30 years. I don't think in 30 years she missed five notes. That's how outstanding she was. Yeah. Wow. I'll have to say something to her. Now That's, that now you know that she's yeah, such a big I, deal. Yeah, yeah. You thought she was just some regular old person well, wandering through your church. She sits with Sam. She sits oh. with you now and then, doesn't she? Yeah. In church? Yeah. And when we did some of the things at church, she, she played piano did for she? us. Tom, yeah, see, Tom was telling me about that at uh, work. He was telling me, oh, I didn't know Sam was such a big deal. And not only Sam, but who was the other person you said? Roy. And Roy. You and Roy would go up and do these shows. And I was like, really? Yeah, you Roy? would do these little skits in front of the church. And everybody got excited when we saw Sam and Roy get up to do their little skits. <laughs> but you didn't know what a big deal I you had, had no, in, in your own little time. church. And yeah. apparently you have another uh, pianist who's also kind yeah, of a no huge kidding. deal. Yeah. See, so you, had, you were spoiled. You were spoiled by yes, what I you am. had going on. 
on there, and, no, and you didn't even know it the whole time. Roy, so. Roy was my kindred spirit. Yeah. He was like a very, very close brother. Great guy. And he got involved because he came to work at the same place where I was working. And we were getting ready to do South Pacific, and uh, we needed men. So one of the guys upstairs says, hey, there's a guy in the warehouse who, who can sing. So I went down there and I said, where's Roy Hines? He says, that's me. I said, can you sing? He goes, yeah. I said, we're doing South Pacific. Come to rehearsal. I'll tell you how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> and, <See? laughs> and he went on to do some of the great roles in Waterville Play Shop. Did he sing in the Toledo Choir or Orchestra, Symphony Choir or something? He sang with the Toledo uh, Choral Group. That's what I thought. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He sang with them for years. Yeah. yeah. So he could sing, obviously. Yeah. He was. He had a wonderful voice, and he was a wonderful actor. I hate to say it, Tom, but I'm seeing a lot of parallels here between our lives because you work together with Roy. We're all working together, so we were like, "Hey, let's do this crap," and and then like we're all like recruiting each other too because we start off with one person who likes musical theater, then another one who likes musical theater. And we just, now Tom has been sucked in this whole time too. It's like, we just keep pulling more and more people at uh, WTOL into the musical theater black hole. It's because now we're, we're really sucking people outside of our department in. It's great. <laughs> but did you hear the one thing Sam said that huh. still is relevant today? What's that? We need needed men. men. We needed men. We yeah. needed men. <laughs> yeah. And we hear that from all the people we're talking to. We, have, we need men. Yeah, where's the guy who can sing? You can sing? I'm not asking. You're coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, early in Play Shop's history, they did not do musicals. Yeah. The, for the first... That, that seems to be a recurring first, with a lot of theater groups. First four or five years, they did drama, comedy. And then... As happens so often in organizations, somebody comes along, has a better idea, and, and it picks the organization up and they go on. In this case, it was Dick Dean. You've heard of Dick Dean. And uh, he, was, he taught choral at Waite High School. And he said, we ought to do a musical. Well, the problem with the musical is, first of all, the rent and royalties are about three times Money, more. Money, yeah, that's the first thing. And then you need accompaniment. And more than they, 75 cents then, right? Well, for oh, yeah. <laughs> we had to charge more. Mm -hmm. And then you, you have to have people who could sing. Right. Yeah. Imagine well, that. So, so they decided to do Fiorello. And uh, the, the, a guy by the name of Paul McCracken had been secretary to Fiorello. He was an assurance agent in Waterville. So they got a lot of original material from him. So did, they did Fiorello. And ever since then, they've done a musical every year. Right, so Fiorello the is not a show I've heard, or I've heard of. Or is Fiorello. It, what what did I say? Figarello? What did I say? <laughs> what did I sure say? what you said. What did I say? You I thought said I said Fiorello. I didn't. It's not, you sound like Fee. Fee? Fee? Oh, fee? Fee? With an F. Fee Fi? Fo Fo I don't know. Yeah, that's I've not one that, that we, we are common or knowledge of at this I point. Alfredo in time. is, uh, I, yes, I'm, Alfredo I'm a fan of it. I'm afraid of it. But what is uh, Fee Arello? That's a, that's a musical that people can get. That's a normal thing. That I've, I've never heard of it. Fee Arello? Yeah. Fee Arello was a mayor of New York. Oh. Well, that's right. And during the newspaper strike, uh -huh. This is what he's famous for. He would read the funnies over the air to the kids. Because huh. if newspapers were on strike, yeah, he was very flamboyant. Hmm. So he, is he the one who caused the, new, the Newsies musical, too? Is that the same guy? Or is that don't a different one? Think I don't so. know. Newsies I mean, wasn't about a, a newspaper strike. Newsies was about the newspaper strike. Was Absolutely. It really? Yeah, that's yeah. what it was all about. I have to they, watch that one. They were, no, it was Pulitzer. See, well, I'm, I'm catching won on. the Pulitzer Prize oh, okay. yeah. as, a, as a musical. Oh. So have you performed in many? Yeah. What was the first one you performed in? That I performed in, first musical, was a little play called Little Me. Mm. And what's that about? Oh, <laughs> it's about this lady who comes from the wrong side of the tracks. Mm. Mm. And she's in love with a boy who's on the right side of the tracks. I already like it. I already like it. <laughs> but in the meantime, she gets involved with all these men who die under s strange circumstances. Ooh. And each death gets her, you know, more and more uh, money. So she becomes very famous. Her name is Belle Portrain. And... Uh, 
on on Broadway, uh, it, it wasn't a very big hit on Broadway, but for Water of a Play Shop, it had a lot of the experienced people and a lot of the new people. And they worked together and they created a dynamic that that brought play shop success. That's what you that want over though. The too. next twenty years. Yeah, that's what you want. You want you want those inexperienced people to be able to come in and see how it's done. Like look at these guys. And and we and that works great with children too. Children coming into theater and seeing like look what look at the effort they put in, look the work they put in. That could be you. You just got to put the time in, you know, work at it, and you'll get better and better well, every year. A lot of times when you have experienced people and new people, there's kind of a, an unhealthy situation. A little tension in there. But in, in this there. case, everybody came together and said, yeah, show us what to do, and we'll be glad to do it. Great. Well, that's great. That's called leadership. Those people who were leads were actually leaders. Yes, that's they great. Were. I love yes, that. You know, show them how to lift them up. You know, you're only as good as... The weakest link when it comes to musical yep. theater. The cor- if the chorus, I've always been a, a person when I watch the show. It's like, oh, that chorus, man, they sounded so powerful, so strong. I love it. And if they're and if they're weak, you're like, what happened there? <laughs> I'm glad the leads were great, but I, the mumbles in the chorus drove me a little crazy. So, yeah. all right. So you're you you've performed. You've directed. No, I, I perform reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have really, performed. He said, I, I am not a good actor. He said perform. that when it came out. Yeah. And, and you've directed. I direct. And you're an author. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is your favorite part of it? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming directing was your favorite part. Is there one that just sticks out as like one of your favorite shows you ever directed? One of my favorite parts was Evil Eye Flegel in Little Abner. <laughs> Oh, all right. I don't know if you're familiar with the Little Abner story. Little Abner, I am, but not Eagle Eye. I had the Yokumberry tonic that makes you live well. My my job was to to jinx Little Abner, so he would give us the the formula to to the to the tonic. Well, that was my role. So <laughs> just I to did. be mischievous. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an acting role, right? Yeah. Well, that that was. That would have been acting for some people. That was <laughs> that was survival for me. Well, how about you talk about your directing? Uh, you did a lot of directing in Waterville. Yes. A lot of directing, yeah. So my favorite show is Finian's Rainbow. Oh, see, nobody does that. I do know that show because Finian's Rainbow. A lot of people miss the point, but it's about brotherhood. Mm. That's the whole theme behind it. Because you have this bigoted Southern senator. Harburg wrote some wonderful lyrics, E.Y. Harburg, wonderful lyrics for that show. But that's one of my favorites. Yeah, Carol Crane did that not, uh, not too long ago, and it won some major awards down in the national competition. So that's, it's obviously one of those shows that's pretty good, but just people don't do it very often. I yeah. don't know why. It's just, but obviously it's one, one of those that touches you. Were you on the board, though, at Waterville, too, I assume? Oh, yes, I served on the board. I was chair three times. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going, so you must have done it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you've obviously touched a lot of people. I mean, we had Joe Barton on here the other week, and he was he was raving about how you. Well, basically if you're were if you're chair, you're trying to keep peace among all these people that that have you know they have different responsibilities, and you know one's in charge of production, one has publicity, and you know publicity doesn't do production, production doesn't do publicity, so it's. But generally, the boards have been just wonderful people, dedicated to play shop and interested in keeping it going. Now, Joe Barton gave you credit for some of the stuff he learned on directing. Who do you give credit to? Marty Bieber. Marty Bieber? Marty Bieber never raised her voice when she was directing. Mm. She didn't have to. Some of her words were like stilettos. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but she, she was laid back. She, and she had this incredible view of the characters in a play. That, and she was the first one. You know, in the old days, we used to close the curtain and then change the scene, close the curtain. Well, she said, the heck with that. It takes too much time. So she, she stopped closing the curtains. So did everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, so they, they the, the lights went down and they changed the scene and, and it moved on and it gave the audience something. They were up there watching what's going on. Sure. What what else have you done in the way of? I mean, you've got those credits, acting, whether you like it or not, mm-hmm. directing and uh, chair. What else have you done 
for Waterville Place. Willie got through like chapter one in his book. He's got a whole lot of stuff to still talk about with just the book alone, just the history. One yeah. of, one, another one of my proudest achievements that I did with Marty Bieber and Joanna Umloff was called Jukebox Saturday Night. Marty and I had done annual meetings. You know, these were extravaganzas. They were almost, many of them were almost like productions. And so, but every year we do like highlights from a musical. So one year I thought, why don't we do something like jukebox? You know, you could, you could get all the music from the 20s to the 80s and, you know, you could do a show. Well, that was rather ambitious. But we put the show together and Joanna played, Marty wrote the narrative, I did the music, and we did that show for 30 years. <laughs> wow. And we had five people who did that show for the 30 years. Pat Dickey, Gary and Diana Wall, Roy Hines, Karen Wiggins, and uh, I can't think of the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. was, this, was this like a recap of the shows you did for the whole no, season or just was, a whole fresh it's, thing? It's songs from the 30s and 40s. And oh, okay. we, we did like the Westerns. And did with the ballads, we did the novelty numbers. They need to bring it back. I think it sounds yeah, fun. Sounds and great. then we did one with the, the war years. In that one, I had written a, an arrangement of uh, This is the Army, Mr. Jones. And, and this is this, the Army's made a man out of me. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. it. Where'd you perform this at? All over. All over. So, okay, Sean, we, on, we Sean I know you're out, listening. Do it out. again. We weren't charging anybody. Oh, wow. And we kept getting more and more, and we said, oh, we got to stop it. Let's charge. Well, that didn't stop them. They said, let's charge more. Still didn't stop them. <laughs> so well, it we, must be good if you got to pay for it. That's what maybe the yeah. masses were thinking. We, we played before maybe three people at the Plantation Inn. It was a Christmas performance. And then we had like 300 uh, 300. We did shows outside. We did it for Roche de Boeuf. We did it for the Cherry Fest. Yeah, that actually sounds very fun. I think, Shauna, I know you're listening to this. You need to get in here and you need to bring this back. You know, current president of the board. Now you Let's said, make it happen. You said you did the music to it. What, what, what does that entail? I mean, you're not well, exactly writing the music because the music's no, already written. But we didn't. Well, I knew the melody of some of the songs, and then I had to write the, the arrangement for Joanna, so I had to do that. But most of it was, was songs that were already published. You know, the, the westerns and the ballads and all those. Uh, we did one song that we didn't need music for, and I'd been wanting to do it for a long time. It was, I called it the vocalese because it were no instruments. It was just the, the performers. And the men were saxophones, and the girls were trumpets. And then when the girls were playing, the men became trombones. And that just drove people crazy. They loved it. They wanted us to do it again every time we did it. It was vocalese. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rachmaninoff had a, a oh. classical piece called the vocalese. Gotcha. Gotcha. That sounds like fun. So, did you have a background in music that you could do this? Or I, when I was in high school, I played in the high school orchestra. I played a saxophone, and then I had a friend of mine who had an orchestra, and I played in the orchestra with him. And then when I went to college, there was a dance band, and I played with them. I still played sax. And when I came out here, uh, we just had the drum and, and the uh, piano. And I thought, gee, it'd be nice to have a bass. So I knew somebody that worked in California that had a bass. He didn't want it, so he shipped it to me. And I taught myself to play the bass, and I played it for Kiss Me Kate, and then for every musical thereafter. Well, obviously, I, you could play the saxophone, so you could clearly play the bass guitar. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, they're yeah. almost exactly the same instrument, so I don't well, see why that was a stretch at all. Well, How in the world? The, Seriously. The advantage you have is you don't have to go one, two, three, four. Oh, that's, you know, you, you know the count. Oh, at least you, you know can rhythm, count to four. You know all yeah. that. So with the bass, you're going boom, boom. You know, you're just see. You plunking. sound like Janine. Janine's like, I only needed to learn how to count to yeah. four. After that, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me to do yeah. complex math. That's now, was fun. it an upright bass or was it like bass. oh, an upright yeah. bass? Okay. And That's I even... used to put that upright bass in my VW. <laughs> <laughs> you could put the VW the neck, in a. The neck would sit right up in front of me, and the rest of it was in the back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's me every time I have to do any kind of home construction. That's, so that's, I'm, I'm holding it all the time with the beams and just in my little... Uh, that's a great visual. Kia Soul. Yeah. yeah. So you played saxophone, bass. And for a while I played flute. 
Of course. Mm. That's another instrument where, well, that at least has fingerings like a sex. Yeah. So they, yes. so you move into, into Waterville and you were surrounded by all these people and then they found another gold mine in you, it sounds like. They're like knocking on, randomly knocking on doors and you go, hey, do you like musicals? And you're like, I don't know, do I? Do you like plays? I don't know, maybe. And you just signed up anyway. That sounds crazy to me. You're like, sure, why not? I'll just do it. Well, here's the interesting thing about the book. We bought a used press. And it was in two homes before it ended up in my basement. So what happened was everything ended up in my basement. I had a small path to washer and dryer, but all the information I needed for the book was in my house. <laughs> Except the interviews I, I did with people. They were all in my house. I didn't have to leave my house to write the book. And so now I'm trying to get them that, that they've got, the, they've got the, the fire station. I'm trying to get them to come and get their stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> but you started it in 86, you said? So it's been... 79. A, no, the book. When oh, you the book. The book? Yeah. Sorry. There was a lot of information in, in, in that book I wrote in 2012 that ended up in the book because that was all the, the, the cast and the, the roles they had. And that most of that came out of... In fact, all of it came out of the, out of the uh, programs... And we had a wonderful newsletter at one time that was printed and mailed out to the membership. There was a lot of information in that. I had 10 years of newsletters that I could go back to and there'd be original sources of wow. information. Wow. But now we can't even buy the book, you said. Well, <laughs> you know Diana Wall? No. Oh, well, you know Gary Wall? No. Okay, well, Diana Wall... It has been in play shop probably as long as I have. Uh -huh. And I wrote the book, and she sold it because uh -huh. I'm not a salesman. Gotcha. I, I can write the book. I can play the music, but don't ask me to sing and don't ask me to perform. <laughs> so she sold the book for me, and we sold out. I do have a flash drive. Oh, okay. And some people wanted the flash drive. You know, they want to put it on their computer. Not me. I want to... Look yeah, at the it's like a book. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get a book. Tell uh, Diana to make Diane. Well, well, yeah, tell her to make some more copies. The limit. I mean, the interest is limited mm -hmm. to people, very limited to people seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. That's when the most of this book took place. And in Waterville area, yeah, who would have a Waterville. passion for, well, or people, to, or people like Tom and it I, goes or to other 2018. Yeah, there's, there's people that are you know more current. I don't know. You might you might be surprised. How much interest there is. Because, I mean, there's a whole podcast dedicated to musical theater now. So, yeah. That's Who's right. that? <laughs> it's us. <laughs> Everybody looking at me like, ooh, wow, I want to I yeah. listen to them. <laughs> what, is, what is one of your favorite memories of, of directing or, or being part of the Waterville Play Shop? The day we did Jukebox Saturday night in 1982 at St. Joseph's. They had a, a stage up there. That day will always live with me because it was it was such a wonderful experience. Someone told me to mention the Chipmunks show. What? Something about a chipmunk? What? That, There's that, a chipmunk that stopped the show. Chipmunk stopped the show. It, it started a fire? Yeah. It wasn't Play Shop. We were doing a show down in Grand Rapids. And we were doing Guys and Dolls. And the Transformer went. That may have been what you were talking about, and the lights went out. Well, it was right in the middle of a guy singing, and Joanna was playing the piano, so she kept playing, he kept singing. So when it was over, we said, sorry, the lights are gone. And they said, we want to see the show. So they all ran out to their cars. They got flashlights and brought them in. The fire department stood in the back, and we finished the show in flashlights. But it was because of a chipmunk, I heard? Yeah, somebody said a chipmunk... Or is that an urban legend? Maybe that's just a legend that the chipmunk bit through the, the some wiring and that's what I don't set know. it off. I don't know anything about ah, that. It's oh. an urban legend. Oh. See, oh, look see? at this. We're perpetuating lies. <laughs> oh my gosh! But it's, that's a, still a great that's story, still though. The that's, story. That, yeah. Everybody went to their cars and yeah. got flashlights. Yes, see? including the chipmunk. Including <laughs> the chipmunk got his flashlights. <laughs> well, the chipmunk sees a shadow. You know what that means. <laughs> means the show keeps going on. That's what it means. <laughs> six yeah. more months. <laughs> six more weeks. Oh, that's a good story, though. 
Anything else you want to tell us, Sam, about... Well, I want to know where the heck we... So, you, come on, you got this book, and I can't get it. So, how am I supposed to see your book? Well, I gave it I gave it to... One to, person has it now, but what, the, what about I'm the listeners? Where can they see it? <laughs> Would you like to... I'll, I'll leave it with you if you well, like. Well, no, this isn't about me. I'm talking about the listeners. When the listeners want to say, oh, there's a book out there, how can they see it? Well, you can go to the library. There you we go. You can't take it out, but you can... Which library can we get it at? Waterville. Okay. There we go. They also have a copy down in downtown Toledo. Oh. In the reference. It's a reference Yeah, they've got one downtown, too. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So anybody wants to to come and see this book and and try and find their own picture in there because he's got a million pictures of people in there. And and the history of this great theater company, Waterville Play Shop, they can go to the Waterville Library or they can go to the downtown library, and they can't check it out, though. They have to look at it there. They have to watch, yeah. Yeah, good. That means nobody can steal it. That's, that's true. Really, yeah, that this means it's true. there. It's not going anywhere. Limited run on this thing. So now you have to go and get it there. You want, you want, you can take a picture of your cell phone of yourself in the book. They'll let you actually make copies oh. of, of pictures. Yeah, you can do that. They in the do library. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to go to a library someday. I know. I'm really not, <laughs> you know, I just don't do stuff like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. do remember doing that now, though, that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, Joseph, well, your, your son was in it. Yeah. His picture must be in there. Oh, I'm, I'm going to take a look at it in there, too. You, you, did you see the picture in there? No, I haven't looked through the book yet. So oh. I like to come into these interviews completely unprepared you, seriously, you, and just wanna, wing it. Do you want so. to take it? I will. When well, you, I won't take Sam, it. Sam, when you I said guarded with your life, I guarded it with my life. All right. <laughs> I'll look through it, and then, Tom, you take it to work. Well, then. And yeah, then I can look at it later at work, and then you are responsible Yeah, I'll just for take it. it back, and I'll bring yeah. it to church. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. do that. You be responsible for it because I don't trust myself. There's a limited supply, and I don't want to be the person who ruins life. So I don't want to do that. There's, there's one yeah. other person I want to ask yeah. you about. You can, you can look in the back. There's an index in the back if awesome. you want to see everybody's where names. Joseph is. Cool. You'll find what page to look on. Very cool. There's one other person I'd like to ask you about. You were married to a lady who I saw in the book a number of times. Oh, my wonderful, wonderful wife. Yeah. She she was active in Play Shop. She was secretary treasurer for 19 years. That's active. Longer than anybody else. Yeah. Did she perform any? Unfortunately, any? she left us a year and a half ago, and it was a sad time. But she was a... A great wife, a great mother, and a great friend. Did she perform any? She was on stage once. She was a boom boom girl. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I already like it. What is a boom boom girl? You gotta girl? explain that yeah. one, Sam. <laughs> and if you knew Janet, this is so out of her her range, but she did it. What is it? Come on, we need to know what a boom boom girl is. I don't that know was, what that, that is. That was in Little Me back in 1971. But what is a boom boom girl? Well, she, this guy would sing and these girls would be dancing in the background. Oh, <laughs> shaking their boom booms. Yes, gotcha. <laughs> there we go. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, that, is that a story we end on or not? <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. Unless yeah. there's something else, we I think we've got what we need. You've yeah, been fantastic, I Sam. I don't. I would just ma- mention, uh, you know. I've been honored by Play Shop. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I received the first Spirit Award. And several years later, I, I was given the Lifetime Achievement Award. And then, miraculously, I was the first Play Shop member inducted into the Octa Hall of Fame. Really? And that's the, yes. That's a huge deal. It's, it's all in the book. <laughs> And he must not have gotten that far. It's, it's way in the back. Oh, yeah. I read that beginning yeah. part, and then everything and there, else was pretty much shows. There are things that, you know, you don't accomplish on your own. Right. You accomplish it because you've got people who work with you and who support you and who put their hands together in applause and on your back. So, yeah. And you married a boom boom girl. Yes. <laughs> Which is his biggest accomplishment to date. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. Sam, you're terrific. Well, thank you very much for asking me to be here. This is quite a treat for me. As it is for us. Yeah.